by psychiatric techniques only. And if you not, don't accept that treatment, you will not get your benefits signed up. And this is what's being said and threatened. And I've got two, or grand, two uh, applications there for posts which I've just received. So that's the sort of pressure that you, you folks are under. And it's, it's quite frankly, it's inhuman and it's not acceptable. Now, along come the Canadians. Three <coughs> cheers for the Canadians. All right. And they said, this is, this is the way, these are all medics, they've got thousands of patients that they've, they've dealt with for many years. All big names in this story. Major common features, post-exertional malaise and fatigue, sleep disorders, pain, and cognitive manifestations. If you've got those four, then you can add in at least one symptom from two of the following categories. Autonomic. The autonomic nervous system is that part of the nervous system that controls things that go out on automatically in our body. Things like heart rates, breathing rates, things like temperature. Uh, and these are the these are damage to that system has been looked at by Merge, I was coming to it shortly. It affects every part of the body. Blood pressure, blood volumes, vertigo, lightheadedness, pallor, intestinal and bladder disturbances, IBS, cardiac arrhythmias, vasomotor instability, respiratory irregularities. Now, have you got one of those? Did you have the first four? And you've got one of those? Right, you're in. Um, <laughs> we've got another one you've got another one to go neuroendocrine thermost thermostatic instability heat and cold intolerance <laughs> anorexia or abnormal appetite marked weight changes hypoglycemia loss of adaptability to tolerance and tolerance to stress slow recovery from stress and emotional lability right so you're in if you've got and there's still more the immune system tender lymph nodes sore throat flu-like -like symptoms general malaise, twice, uh, <laughs> development of new allergies or a change in status of old ones, hypersensitive to medications and chemicals. Who's hypersensitive to medications? Yeah, it's very common, yeah, thank you. Right, so that's, that's the definition that we should be pushing for and that's the definition that, that actually provides a clinician with clinical signs that he can investigate and address. And sometimes it doesn't have to send you anywhere, he can do it himself uh, to look at blood pressure and to look at pulse rate changes when you move sit up, sit and, from sitting and standing and lying down <coughs> so it goes on but still it goes on, fitness to work this is the West Indies, many men again this is what's the matter with you you've had a brief infection usually a viral you've got perfectionist personalities <laughs> so from pressure at work a lot, of, uh, a lot of sickness absences from uh, employment. Fatigue. Not knackered, but fatigue. Uh, prolonged bed rest needed. Maladaptive beliefs. <coughs> chronic invalidism. And terminate service on medical grounds. All lazy children are inactive. If you're a lazy child. I, mean, I can't think of anything more insulting to say to people, really. No wonder people find it hard to take when they go in front of people who say we're going to help you. And this has a big impact on pensions and uh, benefits and insurance. That's Stephen Ralph, another hero from MEA UK. 25% group looked at these, some of the issues. They canvassed their membership for comments about the treatment that was on offer, CBT and grade exercise. And, and various others. Personal centred counselling. 54% of them found it helpful, 46% unhelpful. This is just sitting down talking with someone and trying to talk things through. Psychotherapy, 10% found that helpful, 90% unhelpful. CBT, 7% found it helpful, 93% found it unhelpful. Graded exercise therapy, 5% found it helpful, 95% unhelpful. Pacing, 70% found it helpful, 30% didn't. Most people will, will pace anyway because it's just common sense. Alternative therapies, by this I mean, they mean things like vitamins and supplements and nutritional therapies and things like that. 60% found them helpful, 40% unhelpful. So it's not the answer, but it's, it helps. Symptomatic care management, 73% found it helpful. So it can be managed if it's done carefully and sensibly and sensitively and addressing the issues. Pain management, again, a lot of people found that very helpful. 
So why have we sent 8.2 million on these clinics which are just going to offer graded exercise, pacing and CBT when they are manifestly not helping the people most in need of them who have actually have never been asked and who, who have never been investigated because they're housebound at the very best they're housebound. Four major surveys against uh, amongst the ME patients 25% groupers the Salmon Lawrence, MEA, the Charles Shepherds, acting for MEE, uh, Doris Jones was an independent researcher. They found that the best CBT made no, it was ineffective, um, and after, even after 17 months, Mike Sharp even admitted that it was ineffective. <coughs> Nothing had really changed, absolutely. So he put people through something, and it not brought any main benefits. The MEA said. Uh, it's a bit surprising that they've gone this way, but they have. No volume can make some people worse. That's from their membership. Great exercise most commonly, that most commonly makes people worse, as opposed to a CBT. Physicians are warned, this is Shepherd again, warning people of possible legal consequences of prescribing CBT, GT that might lead to claims against them for inappropriate therapeutic interventions. That's a statement of, from Charles Shepard in the Medical Welfare Board. So if that's offered, people have been, the medics have been warned, watch it, because you could get sued for inappropriate treatment. So how good is it? From a rag bag of patients, some are helped to a degree, but these are not ME patients. Right, this is the Australians. They have invented a new word, myosic encephalopathy. That that has no meaning in disease classification terms at all. So why the swapped ME, myalgic encephalomyelitis, for myalgic encephalopathy? <coughs> I don't know why. Uh, MEA has done it, uh, so people are beginning to understand that this is a, a quite a serious issue. So this is my comments about it. Stick with classifications that are extant at the moment and relevant to your situation. Don't try and invent a new disease because it's not going to work. Looking at the science and medicine, let's look at these stressors very quickly. These are the sort of things that impact upon us as people. We, we all suffer from these sort of exposures. And emotional ones are important ones. As a Christian, I have no problem with prayer being helpful. I have no problem with meditation being helpful. I have no problem on use and the minds being helped to counteract illness and the uh, devastation that illness causes. But to say the illness is caused by the mind is not the same thing. And some of you might be electrosensitive as well, which again is something that no one really believes in in this country. 